I'm Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews and this show is going to be buzzing in more ways than one. I had a unique experience for me, anyway, to attend an open hive and today's show is going to talk about bees and we're probably going to end up with a series on this and I am so honored to have with me in the chair uh, Norman Mercier. He is the president of the Worcester County Bee Association. Thank you for coming. You're welcome. Now, the the organization itself, what does it provide to the general public and what does it provide to the beekeeper? Worcester County Bee Association exists basically for uh, the interest of beekeeping, those who are in the organization, and education. Our primary goal is to educate everyone about honeybees and their value to our society and to the humankind. So we conduct a school each year to teach people how to raise honeybees and how to take care of them. Mm -hmm. Our monthly meetings in the summertime are basically geared toward opening hives and finding out what's going on in the hive at that time for new beekeepers and old uh, people who have been in it for a few years. Mm -hmm. And our winter programs are geared to education for us and the public. Our meetings are always open to the public for uh, people who are working it with bees in the industry and in research and in the government research. There's not a great deal of people who are in bee research in our country. There has been a few more since colony collapse has come about because of the widespread news information about bees and, and their peril in mm -hmm. our society mm -hmm. or in our environment. Mm -hmm. We go to schools, we go to um, community organizations, and we also go to centers uh, for the elderly mm -hmm. to uh, teach everyone. About. We offer an eight week session, uh, three hours. We have two different lectures during that three hour time. We break for a, a coffee and um, some kind of snack. And what we do is we start with the beginning of what what beekeeping what bees are all about, mm -hmm. how the hive is built and constructed, and then there's some overlapping because we talk about installing a package of bees. It's a, a three pound package of bees that with a queen that's put into the hive, or you can buy um, uh, what they call a nuke, which is basically a half of a quarter of a hive with a queen and some bees and some new larvae that mm -hmm. are uh, going through the process of becoming bees in the hive. And then we talk about diseases, we talk about honey production, we talk about getting the hive ready for winter mm -hmm. and overwintering a hive and, uh, and what you have to do along the way. And we kind of overlap just to help people out from session to session of what's going on because it's very intense. Mm. Um, there is no hands-on during our eight weeks except what the hive looks like, what the honeycomb looks like. We use pictures. And then our first summer session, which was in May, that's when the people see actually see the bees and see the bees in the hive and can open it up. And, and that's hands-on. <laughs> that's that's hands-on. That's on. Everyone can handle the the But bees. I think that's a great way to learn because if you're going to keep a hive, you, you have to go through those milestones of being with your bees. Yeah. Let's talk about colony collapse because it's very serious. Colony collapse, we believe uh, now that there's been some research for the last four years on colony collapse, we had a uh, project going last summer in Worcester County and we have it going again this year. Dr. Wu from Harvard University is studying specific kinds of chemicals that may be affecting the bees and colony collapse. One of the things is that bees are not getting enough nutrition when they're just working on pollinating one crop. So they feed them mm -hmm. usually a liquid corn syrup and they believe that there was a chemical in the corn syrup that affected the bees, not um, 
immediately, but perhaps on the syrup that they were storing in the hive. Mm -hmm. Colony collapse is simply uh, when a beekeeper goes to the hive, it's empty. Usually if there's a problem, we can see it in the hive. We can find the disease, we can find uh, what's happening in the hive. And how many bees are usually in a hive? In the wintertime, there's probably 30 to 40,000 in the hive, maybe less. They could probably get by with 20,000, but they keep themselves warm. In the summertime, the hive should be up to 60 to 80,000 bees. 60 to 80,000 bees, 80, all working together. All working together. And they get along too, isn't it amazing? They absolutely do. Now, so if you were to open your hive and there were to be no bees, that's devastating. I mean, that's how correct. does, how do you, how does 60,000 bees disappear? What happened and where did they go? And that was the, that's why they call it colony collapse because nothing is there, not even the queen. Wow. There may be a few larvae that are hatching, but over a period of time, they're gone. The people who notice this uh, most were the people who transport bees around the country to pollinate specific crops. So what are those, those specific crops that they pollinate? Well, in California, it's mostly almonds. In Washington and Oregon, it would be the apples. Um, on the East Coast, they start in Florida and they do the orchards as they come up through Georgia and the Carolinas and, and Massachusetts orchards also. They do the cranberries on the Cape and they truck bees to Maine to do the blueberries. So basically what, we're, what you're saying is there are no wild bees. I mean bees have to be, have to have a partnership with humans in order so that we can survive because they're pollinating if they don't pollinate that fruit, if they don't pollinate that food, we don't eat. That's correct. Our, our crops are so specific now. And when you had a, a s small colonial farm, there may have been wild bees and they would, they would go out and collect them out of the forest and put them in hives. Mm -hmm. So there really wasn't very much of a problem. But now because we have such large expanses of cranberries or orchards or blueberries, they need to truck in colonies of bees in order to make sure the pollination is, is done. Thank you for coming on. We'll Welcome. have you on again Pleasure for sure. Pleasure to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. I am Ramona and you've been watching Ramona interviews. Take a look at the bees. They're fabulous. Have a great week.